All right, so the next team that we'll have is the On Target Cards team, Thomas Riley. Um, we will ideally get you a clicker that works. Um. Uh, thanks, thanks for having us. This uh, Luminary Labs has just put on a phenomenal program, uh, and it's really advanced uh, this technology a lot. So uh, my name's Tom Riley. Uh, I'm part of a bigger team that's located in Fort Collins, Colorado. Um, we've developed these on-target water chemistry cards. Largely, the technology has been funded through the NSF SBIR program, which is a really great way to get technology sort of out of university settings and, and uh, in a for-profit entity that is really trying to commercialize something. So I'll just leave it at that. We've got a great team uh, contributing to all this uh, progress. So. Uh, what are these? What are these Ontario cards? And and I should thank Kumar. He's effectively trained everyone in the room, so it's going to sound like a little. It's going to be a little bit repetitive because we're also doing a training session right now as part of my seven minutes. So uh, these Ontario cards are a simple quantitative way to analyze. Oh, thanks, Patty. To to analyze uh, constituents in water. And so if you look down at the lower left of this slide, effectively what you're doing is you're taking your water sample. You're adding it into a vial with a very, very small quantity of non-toxic benign reagents, shaking it up for 10 seconds. And then what you do is you deliver that fluid with a pipette. But the nice thing is you don't actually have to meter anything. Because metering, for anybody that remembers high school chemistry, is kind of one of the most annoying steps. So you just deliver fluid to the little front inlet port of this on-target card. And then capillary action does the rest. And so your fluid wicks in, and then as that fluid's wicking in, you're doing a titration. Another thing that people, for some reason, didn't enjoy in high school chemistry, <laughs> but we should enjoy it because it's telling us about the world we live in, right? And that's exciting, and that makes it fun. So, so and, we, and you can see here we've got a poor uh, nephew of uh, one of the folks at the company who's, uh, who's running this card and actually enjoying it. They tested swamp water in Florida, and they saw a weirdly large signal, but we can talk about that later. So. <laughs> So, so, and just as a quick rehash, uh, why do we need this card, right? Water chemistry testing has been around for a long, long time. You know, some of the literature we look at dates back to the early 1900s. Um, but it's because if you, if you go left to right here, you, can, you start out with a dipstick test, which, yes, everybody can run. But the downside is we don't really do anything with that data because it's really not descriptive. It's not quantitative. And so we get stuck. So then you say, ah, great. We'll just, we'll just elaborate on this chemistry kit like what we've got in the middle. So now we'll, we'll, we'll jack up the amount of chemicals we use. We'll have, you know, 18-step instructions, and then we'll get a more accurate uh, result. Sometimes that's true, but you're actually most likely uh, in, in the citizen science or the education setting, you're probably just going to have a lot of people mess it up and, and actually not get the result they were supposed to get. So you sort of miss that teaching moment, which is really uh, frustrating, and you also miss that ability to kind of continue on and be curious. And then, or you could say, well, okay, now I got it. Okay, buy this handheld reader from me, and that's only five, and it's only five hundred dollars. Except now you've put a financial obstacle in people's way to getting to a quantitative result that would allow you to do things like trend line and and monitor things or or comp intercompare different materials or different water samples. Um, and and the environmental uh, need is really significant, right? So we want people to be more curious about the world they live in. So here is a little time lapse video of. All those things that we were talking about on the previous slide, but just happening uh, all in one step after we've delivered fluid to the card. So what you're seeing is, and it's kind of hard to see, there's a little droplet of water sitting in the middle here. You've got a little front of water that's wicking outward. And then you'll, you can kind of see there's a blue spot forming in the middle. And that blue spot is our titration. So we're just measuring copper in water all right there. And then you can either use a lookup table to say, hey, my spot's 10 millimeters in diameter. Great. You're above the EPA action limit for copper in your water. Maybe you want to call somebody. So, you know, or maybe you want to test any number of other hypotheses, right? So, so the value proposition is pretty basic. And, and there's a lot of angles depending on what user group you're talking about. But really what you're talking about is testing and quantifying constituents in water uh, or maybe things that you've leached into water, like say you want to do soil testing. Um, and you're still able to do this and communicate this in a, uh, in a way that sort of anybody can use it. So simplicity is really at the heart of what we try to do. Uh, so for just an example, I know we don't have a lot of time, but we just said, okay, let's do some demonstrations as part of this tool foundry project. So we went out and said, great, let's go and test public drinking water fountains all around the city of Fort Collins. We tested four, four, 14 locations, five different cards, analyzed them all. Hey, you know, if you, we got a couple of hot hits, that's something for follow-up, right? Uh, the classroom setting, we pilot, we're piloting, piloting this in classrooms. 
The kids have really enjoyed it. They kind of like this idea that they get to the color changing part in the exploration without test tubes and glassware and pipettes, right? So the fun is really in seeing the chemistry become visual. It's not, it's not really in the glassware and the cleaning of the glassware. So um, we've made a ton of progress during this accelerator, um, some of which has been really the things that uh, technologists are not good at, which is making progress out of the lab and actually getting things into people's hands. Um, and when you're talking about low cost tools, you're in a space that the tool set is a little bit different, right? So you gotta figure out, is digital marketing a fit for us, right? Could Amazon be the channel to get to market for us? Um, what are people really searching for and interested in in their water, right? These are all things that a small business needs to try to figure out because really you want this product to succeed um, and not, not sort of die on the vine. So <clears throat> uh, just to slow down, we think this is a great tool today and you can use a ruler or you can even use the printed millimeters that are on the card to, in a lookup table to say, great, I, I, have a, I have a course idea of what's in my water. But, but part of what we see is so exciting about this platform is that when you make the invisible visible and then you've expanded in a way that you're not just discerning against hues and the depth, how red is my red, but you're talking about something that makes it very easy for smartphones and tablets to use, you have the potential now to marry this with uh, machine learning platform, uh, algorithms, uh, artificial intelligence, and also multiplexing these cards without really costing you extra runtime and without, without needing to add expertise to the person running the card. So we think that the potential here is so far beyond just citizen science and the, in the classroom. This is really talking about a, sort of a game change in the way that water analysis is done because in the sort of developed world, we have all these luxuries, right? We, that we get to sort of have, you know, for the most part, um, access to a lot of tools. But this could really go and have such a tremendous reach beyond where it's at right today. So um, some of the things that we'd love to talk to, you know, I'd love to talk to you more about are please come by and we'll run some demos um, at the booth so you can kind of get an understanding of where the technology is at. Um, we are sort of working our way through the uh, channels that will be able to scale up this, tech, uh, this technology and really get into the hands of more people. So people interested in seeing the, this kind of thing get into the hands of more people, please come by and let's chat.